Hello, Marvel United Party people. Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much for joining me here again today. We're talking part two of our DC United hypothetical trilogy here um, because that's the kind of nerd I am. But if you were just joining us uh, last time, uh, we talked about uh, a hypothetical season one of a DC United game, which is looking more and more likely now that we know Simon and Spin Master have acquired rights to do Deceased. So it sounds like it's more just a matter of time, uh, as much as my wallet is quaking in fear with the thought of it. Uh, but we talked about the season one and how it would be a basic, easily accessible season full of the DC mainstay characters. And I had a lot of fun making that, so I ended up keeping that ball rolling and I made a season two and a season three. Season two is what we're here to talk about today. And hey, if you end up liking this video and you think I'm a pretty creative guy and you like what I have to say, then maybe consider checking out my books, We Were Wizards. These are my self-published fantasy novels that you can find right now on Amazon all over the world. They come in ebook and paperback and hardcover. This is the first one, the purple guy right here. And the second one is the silver sexy one behind it. Um, these are my pride and joy, my life's work. This story is very important to me, and if you're a fantasy fan, or you know somebody who's a fantasy fan, this is going to rock their world. I promise. That's a guarantee, almost. I don't know. I don't know if there's some kind of legal catch to me saying it's a guarantee, so maybe I shouldn't say that. But We Were Wizards, check it out on Amazon right now. Now that that's out of the way, let's not waste any more time. Let's talk about Season 2 of DC United. And I have to admit, I think of the three seasons that I made, Season 2 is my personal favorite because it contains elements of the DC universe that are not exactly mainstream, but to me, they are arguably some of the best parts of the DC universe. They represent just how colorful and wild and crazy and fun the DC universe can be. Emphasis on the colorful part. If this season existed in real life, if Simon made this, I think I would buy it twice. I would want it so much. So going off what we did last time, if you'll remember, I mentioned how I, I basically just kind of took what they did with Marvel and found the DC counterparts of that to balance out how these seasons would work and, you know, how they'd be released, etc. Uh, for season two, I kind of stuck to those guns. Season two of Marvel was all about what? X-Men, right? It was an all X-Men season, all mutants everywhere. Unfortunately, maybe this is just chalked up to limited knowledge on my part because I'm not a huge comic reader. I don't, you know, avidly collect them. But unfortunately, I could not think of a one-to-one -one scale comparison of a individual group of characters in the DC universe that is as vast and all-encompassing as X-Men was. However, I was able to find a physical space of the DC Universe where I could really draw from a lot of characters. So that's what I ended up doing. If season one was the grounded, down-to-earth, vanilla season of DC, then what better place to journey next than the cosmos beyond? In light of the absolutely fantastic DC stories set off planet Earth, I give you season two of DC United, Genesis. As you can probably tell by the name, if you're a DC fan, Genesis is going to focus a lot on the new gods and space and all the cosmic DC characters because there's quite a lot of them out there and there's a lot of world building that goes on off Earth. So in season two, Genesis, I went with the new gods and space as our theme for the core box. Ten characters, because that's the rule. Six of them are heroes, and those heroes are going to be Adam Strange, who I love because he's got that old-fashioned space suit, which is so much fun. It's so pulpy. Aresia from the Green Lantern Corps. Big Barda. Black Racer. Mr. Miracle. And Orion. And we'll give Aresia some translucent green effects because she is part of the Green Lantern Corps. The villains of the core box are going to be Brainiac and Mongol. They're both two very different space-based villains. So I figured they'd make a nice contrast and they wouldn't both feel the same. 
I imagine Brainiac is going to be the hardest villain in this box. He's probably just the most difficult one to fight. Uh, he's going to be a toughie. But then we've got two anti-heroes in this core box that are going to make a lot of people very happy because they are Lobo and Maxima. Lobo, of course, is the bounty hunter that a lot of people love, and Maxima is a Superman villain who has sometimes been known to work with the Justice League, so she makes a perfect anti-hero. And that's our core box. And as far as a core box for a space-based DC game, again, I think this is a perfect set of characters. You've got a nice mix of people, different powers, different physical looks to them. These aren't going to be samey looking miniatures. I want this. I want this in my house right now. As usual, as is the Kickstarter fashion, pledge to get this core box and you will get a bonus villain team. This time, the villain team, uh, it's still Earth-based. That's not a super cosmic team, but it is much more superpower-based than the villain team of Season 1. And that villain team is the Society of Sin, made up of the following three villains, Phobia, Plasmus, and Warp. But unlike the Royal Flush Gang, Phobia, Plasmus, and Warp can also be played as individual villains. Of course, every season of a United game should have a final boss battle, an expansion with the biggest, baddest dude around, or dudette, someone to really stretch your heroes to their limits and give you an ultimate challenge. Last season, I thought Zod made a great final boss. This season, though, we're stepping up our game. We are going with the most evil entity, in my opinion, in the DC universe. We're going with their equivalent of Thanos. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Dark Side War. If you're going with the theme of the new gods and space, you can't not have Dark Side here. This is it. Dark Side is our final boss for season two. And the Dark Side War box comes with five villains Dark Side, obviously, Desaad, Glorious Godfrey, Granny Goodness, and Steppenwolf. And since we've all sung this dance before, you know what this box is going to be like. You can face any of these five villains totally on their own, but of course, the mega challenge here is going to come in the Dark Side War challenge mode, which has you facing off against all four of these devious henchmen before going up against Darkseid himself in a giant villain gauntlet. And again, I will leave the um, character specifics to people who are better at uh, thinking up those things than myself, but I feel like Darkseid should be one of the hardest villains in any United game. Uh, he is nothing to sneeze at, folks. This guy almost killed Superman, right? So I want Darkseid to be really, really difficult. Like, if you beat him, you should be throwing a party and dancing up and down the street. Now, if you recall from Multiverse, when you pledged to get both the Core Box and the Galactus Box, you not only got the Wrecking Crew as a villain team, but you got a bonus hero in Iron Lad. Well, I have decided to throw in a bonus hero here as well that you will get if you pledge for the Core Box and for the Dark Side War. However, that bonus hero spoils something that's going to come a little bit later. So put a pin in them for now. We're going to come back to this bonus hero a little bit later. Okay? Okay. In the meantime, we're moving on to our first regular expansion. And that expansion is going to introduce one of the many new teams that are coming this season. Say hello to the Legionnaires. The Legionnaires are a super futuristic, very sci-fi team. I'm going to admit they are not my favorite. There are like 40 of these guys, and I've never been very interested whenever they popped up. They're just one of my least favorite sides of the whole DC canon, but I know they have a bunch of fans, so I'm not going to leave them out. Plus, it gives us a whole new slew of heroes to work with, so why would I possibly leave them out? This is the Legionnaires expansion box. It comes with six heroes. No villains, just six fresh new heroes, and they are Andromeda, Brainiac 5, the oversized miniature of Colossal Boy and Shrinking Violet. These two tend to work together as a team. You have a really, really big dude and a really, really tiny lady. So this should be a really fun mini. Then you also have Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, and Triad. 
there are, of course, plenty of other Legionnaires, many, many other Legionnaires. Will we fill out this roster even more? I think you can say it's a safe guess, but for now, that's what this box is given us. And the Legionnaires are going to get their very own team deck, because those are still a thing. The next expansion in DC United Genesis is going to give us another team to add to the list. Uh, this is another team that is not one that I am super familiar with, but they have popped up a lot in a lot of stories I've read, and that is the Freedom Fighters. And the Freedom Fighters box consists of five heroes who are Black Condor, Doll Man, Human Bomb, Phantom Lady, and the leader of the Freedom Fighters, Uncle Sam, which I gotta admit is a pretty funny getup for a superhero. And he is so DC, like he's totally DC. This is as DC as a character can get. But there you have it, the Freedom Fighters. And of course, they will also come with their own team deck, which may be added to as we add more Freedom Fighters to the list. Next is another new team, and this one is about to get a whole lot more popular in the coming years, so might as well cash in on that now. This expansion is going to be James Gunn's favorite. Say hello to the Creature Commandos. They are a team of monsters, like the classic universal horror monsters. Marvel has their own version as well. Uh, I put them in my hypothetical Marvel Season 4, but I'm um, sticking the Creature Commandos here in Season 2. They are definitely more part of the supernatural side of DC, but that side of DC is going to get a lot of love in this season, as you'll see shortly. But the Creature Commandos box will contain the following five heroes. Dr. Mazursky, Jake, Kallus, Lucky Taylor, and Lieutenant Matthew Shreve. And the box will also contain one supernatural villain for them to go up against. It's one of the coolest looking DC villains, in my opinion. I love his outfit. The evil sorcerer Felix Faust, who goes up against a lot of DC's supernatural superheroes. Felix Faust seemed like the perfect person to put in this box. And yes, the Creature Commandos will get their own team deck. Sticking with that supernatural theme, we're going to jump right into our next expansion box now with... Justice League Dark. This is one of the probably most popular offshoots of the Justice League, the supernatural side of them. This is going to be a lot of fun because you are getting in this box the heroes Blue Devil, Dead Man, Detective Chimp, and John Constantine. Plus you will get the terrifying villain Eclipso and the anti-hero Enchantress who is a very different character from Marvel's Enchantress. The whole thing she has with June Moon, where she possesses her, great stuff. Of course, they will have a team deck, and of course, you will be able to add previous characters to this team as well, such as Zatanna, right? She's a part of Justice League Dark. So there's a lot of cross-pollination going on, just like with Marvel United. The next box is going to be a lot of fun, even though... Most of the minis are going to look very similar until you paint them. I still have a blast with this. This box is simply called Shazam, right? The Marvel family is going to comprise the bulk of this box because these characters are so much fun. The game designers can have a lot of fun with implementing how, since they're kids at heart, they might not be as fine-tuned as heroes as some of the other characters, but they might make up for it with I don't know, some other attributes. Maybe they're more energetic, etc. right? But you could really have fun with these. So this Shazam box is going to include the full Marvel family, which is Billy Batson, of course, our main dude, Darla Dudley, Eugene Choi, Freddie Freeman, Mary Marvel, and Pedro Pena. And instead of a villain, the box is going to contain an anti-hero. We all want to see them together even though the movies had other plans, it's Black Adam. Yeah, of course, it's gotta be. It's Black Adam, he's in this box. It's happening, that's what we all want. And uh, true to form, both Black Adam and Billy Batson will have translucent yellow lightning crackling all over their miniatures because whenever you see Captain Marvel and Black Adam being drawn that way, it's just gorgeous to behold. There you go, Shazam. 
and the Marvel family will, of course, have its own team deck with more to be added. As we keep going, these expansions are getting me more and more excited. And the next expansion is a DC team who I absolutely adore. And I'm pretty certain we're going to be getting some kind of movie or show about them sooner or later. I couldn't be more excited. This expansion is The Metal Men. The Metal Men is another expansion that does not contain any villains. It's all heroes. Those heroes are Dr. Will Magnus, the leader of The Metal Men, and his creations... Copper, gold, iron, lead, mercury, platinum, and tin. But I'm doing something different here. I'm going above and beyond anything that Marvel United has given us so far. Because of the nature of the Metal Men, I want them to stand out because they just, they're such cool looking characters. They need to stand out a little bit. So just like we saw with the Silver Surfer, each of the metal men is going to be fully colored the color of their metal, right? They won't be made of metal, because uh, that, that would be super expensive. But hey, maybe if Simon wants, they can do an ultra mega expensive version where you can get it where they're actually made of metal. Uh, that would be actually a pretty cool option. Let's throw that in. An optional metal box, just for fun. Uh, but for those of us who don't want to put out a second mortgage, uh, you can just get the Metal Man box with plastic miniatures where all the bases will be blue, just like Silver Surfer, but the figures themselves will be colored their respective colors. This makes me so happy. Please let this become a real thing. That's the Metal Men. And yes, they will have a team deck as well. As we move farther out into deep space we get the box that I know a bunch of people, myself included, have been waiting for. My friends, it's time for the Green Lantern Corps. Green Lantern Corps is an expansion box that is going to come with five heroes and one villain. Those heroes are going to be Ganthet, Gnort, Guy Gardner, Salak, and Soranic Natu. And the villain will be the intergalactic criminal Kanjar Ro, who has gone up against the Green Lantern Corps many, many times. In my perfect world, every one of these heroes is going to come with translucent green effects on their mini because they're all part of the Green Lantern Corps. However, I understand that maybe that might get expensive for Simon and Spin Master. So in a realistic world, let's say just Guy Gardner and Saronic Natu have the green effects. Let's say the other ones are just posing or doing something cool. But again, if I had my way, they would all have it. We'll keep the cost down, especially because of the next box that's coming. But that's the Green Lantern Corps. And yes, they will have their own team deck because of course they will. All right. The next expansion, if it ever became a real thing, would not only be my favorite expansion of this season, it would be my favorite expansion of any board game I have ever played, period. This comes from my favorite part of the DC Comics universe. It is the Lantern Spectrum. Just look how beautiful this is. This got me started in DC Comics when I saw that they were doing this because it was just visually so enticing. And I got into it and I couldn't stop and I became a diehard Green Lantern fan through it. The Lantern Spectrum is something I absolutely need in my life. And this box will have eight characters in it. Three of them are heroes, and those heroes are Kilowog, Saint Walker, and Indigo One. One character is a villain, the villain known as Black Hand. And the last four characters are anti-heroes, Atrocitus, Larflees, Sinestro, and Star Sapphire. I can't stress enough how big a deal these characters are to me. And to make things even more special, I'm going all out. I don't care. This needs to be a thing. Every single one of these characters, because they wield lantern rings of some kind, every single one of them is going to come with translucent effects on their minis. But every single one of those translucent effects is a different color because they all are. Kilowog is green. Saint Walker is blue. Indigo one is indigo. Black Hand is black, Atrocitus is red, Larflees is orange, Sinestro is yellow, and Star Sapphire is violet. We've seen the violet ones on X-Men, so we know they can be done. Uh, we've never seen orange or black or indigo 
but they can make it happen. There's a lot of plastic floating around the world, especially where Simon and Spin Master are concerned. They can make this happen. They need to make this happen. I need the Lantern Spectrum box in my life. Please, somebody make this. Characters like Atrocitus, Larflees, Sinestro, they really made an impact in the DC world. They became a big deal. Atrocitus got his own comic. Sinestro is one of my favorite DC villains. Oh, just give it to me. Give me all of it. Like I said, I would buy this twice. And last but certainly not least, we have one more regular expansion in DC United Genesis. Last time in season one, I gave you the villain box Arkham Asylum, which, like the Sinister Six, was a box full of villains, five to be precise, and it was modular. So you could take any Batman villains and add and subtract them so that you could fight a combination of any five Batman villains you want in Arkham Asylum mode. Well, the thing about Batman is he's got a lot of fantastic villains, folks. He's got so many. So we needed to just continue that trend. I am proud to present the final regular expansion here, Arkham Asylum 2. Why fix what ain't broken? This box gives you five more Batman villains to add to the Arkham Asylum roster who can all be faced individually or swapped out in Arkham Asylum mode. And they are Clayface, Hugo Strange, Killer Moth, Mr. Freeze, who will come with translucent ice effects. And finally, my absolute favorite Batman villain, the Riddler. And as we all know, for Batman fans, there are even more villains to come. So I think it's a pretty safe bet you will see an Arkham Asylum 3 next season. And now that the Lantern Spectrum has been revealed to you, we can backtrack a little bit and talk about that bonus hero character that you get if you pledge the base core and the Dark Side War box. Because that bonus hero is White Lantern Kyle Rayner. There is a point in the, I believe, Brightest Day, where in order to fight back the Black Lanterns, Kyle Rayner becomes the White Lantern, and he goes crazy Super Saiyan with it. It's a lot of fun. So that is our special bonus hero you can receive here. And yes, he will come with white translucent plastic effects. So when you put all nine of these Lantern Spectrum characters together, they are going to look gorgeous. All right. That's everything out of the way. Now it's time to talk about the big, chunky stretch goal box and all the goodies we are going to get in said chunky stretch goal box. Here are the characters you will be able to unlock in DC United Genesis as stretch goals, starting with the hero Animal Man, who can take on the powers and attributes of any animal. So his deck is going to be so much fun. Next is Wonder Woman's arch nemesis, the villain Ares, the god of war. Because he wears like big scary armor, you can imagine how cool this miniature will look, and he's probably not going to be an easy fight either. Next is a cosmic villain who is, I believe, the evil sister of Starfire. It's Blackfire. She's either her sister or her mother, I can't remember, but uh, she's her evil counterpart, and I love when a villain is an evil counterpart of a hero. So that's why Blackfire's here, because she's cool. Next, we have a Green Lantern hero by the name of Boudica, who was part of the Green Lantern Corps for many years, uh, since way back in the Emerald Twilight days. And she can have some translucent green effects if it's not too much trouble. Coming up next is another Wonder Woman villain, Chang Tzu, who is a giant egg-like creature that walks on these robotic spider legs. He is just a visual delight. He will be an oversized miniature for sure. Oh, I want this so badly. I just want to see the Simon Chibi version of this, please. Speaking of large round characters, our next one is a hero, another Green Lantern, Chaselon, who is a giant refractable disco ball man who is another longtime mainstay of the Green Lantern Corps. This character is hilarious. He just, I love the way he looks. I want him in here. I want to see what we can do with him in miniature form. Next is another cosmic alien villain who's caused a lot of trouble for the Justice League, Despero. This can be another really tricky fight because I know Despero has come very close to putting the whole Justice League out of commission. Next is the hero, Dove. Dove has a great costume. I love her goggles. She's very, uh, she, she just cuts like a striking silhouette, especially when she's standing next to her partner. Uh, but more on that later. Next is the villain, Dr. Light, who is a longtime villain in the DC universe. Uh, he's got this funky black and white outfit and he flies 
I picture his mini looking pretty cool as well. That's Dr. Light. Next is the villain Dr. Savannah, who you can happily pit against the characters in the Shazam box because they go together like bread and butter. He's one of their mainstay villains. Heck, he was even in the first Shazam movie. And another villain, this one who can be pit against the Green Lantern Corps, is Fatality. And Fatality is a member of the Star Sapphires, so she is going to have the translucent violet effects around her miniature. She is a longtime enemy of Jon Stewart because the two of them have a history that at one point was even a little bit romantic. <whistles> Next we have an Earth-based hero, very Earth-based in fact, because his name is Geoforce and he controls the Earth. He's basically like an Earthbender and he's a politician too. So he can be very diplomatic. He's kind of like an Eastern European Captain America in a way. Next is Halo. She's a hero I didn't know very much about, but I know she's cosmic. She's from the cosmic side of things, and she's very cool looking. I mean, look at her. She will be tricky to adapt, but I think if we can get some translucent white on her miniature, kind of like Invisible Woman, that might be the best way to do it. I don't know. Maybe you can think of a better idea. Next is the hero, Hawk. And Hawk is Dove's partner. He's the raging yang to her sober yin. Uh, they go together really well. And I thought they were perfect because they are the DC equivalent of Cloak and Dagger, right? Hawk and Dove. Cloak and Dagger were in the X-Men stretch goal box, so it makes sense that these guys are in the Season 2 stretch goal box too. There you go. Huntress is our next hero we are going to unlock. And Huntress is going to be a part of the Gotham Knights team because she's a part of it in the comics, as well as the Birds of Prey team, which I totally forgot to add last time. So we're adding it this time. Birds of Prey is going to be a team, and you can also add people like Black Canary and Harley Quinn to that team, because why not? Next is another hero who's going to be added to another team, and that's Isis, the wife, I think wife, definitely girlfriend, but yeah, I think they got married. The wife of Black Adam. Uh, she's an awesome character too. She kind of uh, puts Black Adam in his place when he gets out of hand. She will have translucent yellow lightning effects and she will be a part of the Marvel family team. Next, we have another anti-hero, Jericho. Jericho is the son of Deathstroke. He's got weird yellow curly hair and I really like his outfit. He's an older character, but he's a classic mainstay of the Teen Titans. So as a hero, you can add him to the Teen Titans team deck. Next is another cosmic villain, Calabac. I believe this guy is a son of Darkseid, and he's just a super strong rageaholic who carries a weapon called a Beta Club. Superman has trouble tangling with Calabac. That's how strong this guy is. So I figure we could probably make his villain deck work in a similar way to Abomination, because from what I remember, Abomination is going to be all about raw brute strength. So... Calabac can work that way too. Sticking with the new gods part of space, we have the hero Light Ray, who is a charming, happy-go-lucky member of the new Genesis new gods. It makes sense, right? Let's get Light Ray in here to round out that roster. And yes, new gods will be a team deck that he will be a part of, as will Orion, Black Racer, Big Barda, and all those other cosmic heroes. Madam Xanadu is the next hero we are going to unlock. She, of course, is a part of Justice League Dark, so she's going to get Add it to that Team Deck roster. And she's this blind lady. Uh, she's got all these tarot cards around her. She fits perfectly in that mysterious supernatural world. Next is a villain who is going to pose a big threat to the Green Lanterns. And that villain is Major Force, whose infamous actions have trickled down to this day where improper treatment of a female character in comic books has become known as fridging. And if you go ahead and look that up and do your own research, you'll know exactly what I mean. But here's Major Force. He's a terrible dude. Next is another anti-hero, Manchester Black, who is actually part of the Superman mythos. And he's a character I wasn't too familiar with, but looking him up, I saw that Manchester Black has had a lot of cool stuff interwoven in Superman's world. So I wanted to put him in here as an anti-hero. There we go. Next is another cosmic villain from the far reaches of space. And this one is a tongue-in-cheek villain, Manga Khan. This guy, I believe, breaks the fourth wall a bunch. He loves collecting comic books, hence the name manga in his name, right? I have a trading card of him where the picture on the trading card is a picture of him stealing the trading cards that this set is from. It's, it's so meta. I love it. But 
Manga Khan, he's got to show up here. Now we have a hero who can be added to the Legionnaires team deck, and that is one of the funniest named heroes in all of DC, Matter Eater Lad. He eats stuff. That's his thing. He eats stuff. I can't wait to see what they do with cards for a character like this. I mean, you could go so many fun directions with Matter Eater Lad, but there he is. He's in the game now. You're welcome. Here's another new gods hero, Metron, who sits in this big oversized chair that flies through space and shoots lasers out of it. He's one of the coolest looking new gods next to Mr. Miracle. Uh, I really want to see some Metron action and it's cool to have a, a hero sitting in a chair because I don't think we've had that before. Another deep space hero who goes hand in hand with a previous hero is Miss Martian, another green Martian who becomes a romantic interest of Martian Manhunter. I really like this character. I had a huge crush on her when she showed up in the Supergirl show. Here you go. Here's another villain, Mr. Mind, who can once again be pitted against the Marvel family. And yes, he's a tiny caterpillar. So I thought, to have fun with this, wouldn't it be great if his miniature was he's sitting in a jar on top of a table? That's the miniature. Wouldn't that be fun? He's so tiny. We haven't really experimented with super tiny characters in these games yet, but that's the way I want to see him portrayed by Simon. Somebody please make that happen. Next is a hero who's a lot of fun, Mr. Terrific. Uh, once again, the Arrowverse did this guy so well. He's, he was a great Mr. Terrific in the Arrowverse. He is one of the smartest men on the planet, smarter than Batman, and he knows his way around all kinds of technology. He's just, he's gotta be here, man. He's a great DC hero. Next is a villain who shook the world to its core during the Blackest Night storyline. It's Necron, the Lord of Death, who I believe uh, his fight will be a tough one. He's probably going to be one of those villains who permanently kills a hero when he KOs them. But because it's Necron, I think he would turn those heroes into evil zombies and then send them after the living heroes. So he's going to be scary. Next, we have another anti-hero. Uh, he's a new favorite, thanks to a certain movie. It's Polka Dot Man. I love this guy. His miniature is probably going to end up looking a lot like Spock from Spider-Geddon, but who cares, man? This guy's great. He's going to be a member of the Suicide Squad team, but he is also technically a Batman villain. So when you use him as a villain, you can add him to Arkham Asylum mode. And he's going to probably throw polka dots at you. I would love to fight this guy, and I know a lot of people would be thrilled to paint him. Next is the hero Powerhouse, Naomi McDuffie. She's a much newer character. She was actually created by Brian Michael Bendis way after I stopped reading DC Comics, but she has become quite a big deal. They even put her in a her own CW series. So I think Powerhouse just has a huge fan base, and I want that fan base to be happy to have her in the game. So she is going to be in the game. There we go. Next is a hero known as the Ray, who has an awesome costume. The Ray just looks so cool. He's gonna come with translucent yellow effects, and he is a part of the Freedom Fighters team. Next is the Green Lantern Sarek, who has the special ability to speak to the dead. So we can treat Sarek a little differently than we do other Green Lanterns, because I don't think he fights alongside them. He's just sort of separated himself from the core. He really does his own thing. So let's let's give him something unusual in his hero deck. Speaking of Green Lanterns, here's another one, Sodam Yat, who I believe became the Ion. So he's definitely going to have some green translucent stuff on him because he's always crackling with green energy. Some people might think this season is a little too heavy on the Green Lanterns, but too bad. To me, the Green Lanterns are as cool as I know the mutants are to a lot of people. So I want to represent as many of them as possible. Next is a hero who will probably have to be oversized. And that is the Spectre. And the Spectre is going to be a tricky one because he's so powerful. I feel like they're definitely have to going to go a special route with him. He might have translucent effects on him. He might not. I don't know. He's really, really tricky. He'll also be a member of Justice League Dark. As long as we don't make him too overpowered, the Spectre might be a really fun character to try. The next hero is Spoiler, who was an on-again, off-again girlfriend of Tim Drake's Robin, which means she is going to be a part of the Gotham Knights hero team. I love her purple hood. Spoiler's a really cool looking character. Next is one I know a lot of people love. He's got to be here. Say hello to Swamp Thing. 
From what I gather, he is one of the most heroic and powerful entities in the DC universe, and he's also a part of Justice League Dark. I love this season so much. Swap thing, isn't it? The next hero is Tomar II, who is another member of the Green Lantern Corps, and he's been around for a long, long time. He's part of a bird species that I believe are the Thanagarians? I, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. It's been a minute. But he's a bird man. Let's give him some green translucent energy because he's shooting stuff out of his power ring. Next up, the villain Toy Man, who has contended with Superman many, many times. Uh, he's much more down to earth, but yeah, we can sprinkle some down to earth people in too. Why not? Toy Man will have all kinds of stuff like exploding teddy bears and jack in the boxes that kill you. Uh, he is similar to the Joker and the Trickster, but he is very hyper toy focused. So I think if you stick with that, you can have a lot of fun with how Toy Man performs in the game. Next is the hero, Vath Sarn, who, yes, you guessed it, another Green Lantern. He is a very hot-headed Green Lantern, though, so he might be the type of character who doesn't really help out his teammates very much, but uh, the flip side of that, he can do a lot of damage. He might behave like a character like uh, Drax or Venom. Coming up next is the hero Vincent Velcoro, who is a vampire, and he is part of the Creature Commandos team. Not the last one we'll see, either. Next, we have our final villain of the Stretch Gold Box, Volthoom who was super powerful because he was the first being in the DC Universe to ever wield a power ring. So he was the first lantern. And if you remember that comic, he was bad news too. Volthoom will come with translucent white effects, like an Invisible Woman white effect. Um, I think that works best here because he's all the colors all at once, so that would be kind of tricky to do otherwise. Uh, and I imagine him being a pretty challenging fight. Next is the hero, Warren Griffith. The Werewolf Man, DC's answer to Werewolf by Night, and the final member that we get to add to Creature Commandos. Now you will have the whole set, and you can have a lot of fun taking the Creature Commandos out on adventures where they fight other monsters. You're welcome. Remember when I said Warren Griffith would be the final creature? I lied because Weasel is the next hero we are unlocking, and Weasel is also part of the Creature Commandos. If you remember him in the Suicide Squad, he was this wild little thing. I don't know how they would adapt him for the game, but I imagine he would kind of be similar. Yeah, let's put Weasel in here. And finally, one last hero to unlock, another member of the Marvel family, White Adam, who is a relatively new addition. I've never read any comics with White Adam in it, so I don't know what his deal is, but he seems like a really cool dude. I think he is going to take the name Adam and kind of give it more nobility and just more heroicism than Black Adam ever did, so I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. So White Adam is in the game. If you've been keeping track, the amount of team decks we have added are a doozy. So if I've been keeping track correctly, the new team decks that you get to play with are Birds of Prey, Creature Commandos, Freedom Fighters, the Green Lantern Corps, Justice League Dark, the Legionnaires, the Marvel Family, the Metal Men, and the New Gods. Again, if I'm missing anything, I'm sure I am somewhere in there. Please let me know. And we can add them retroactively because this game doesn't really exist. So we can kind of be flexible like that with it. Finally, to cap this all off, what's better than a little incentive among friends to help nudge you towards a pledge? The Kickstarter exclusive bonus you get if you go all in on DC United Genesis is the villain Starro. Starro fits the theme. He is a cosmic space villain, and he's a giant purple and blue starfish, so he's going to be oversized as well. Oh my god, just imagine how Simon can mold this guy in plastic form. Just imagine the fun it will be to hold that miniature, or bigature in this case, in your hand. I really need this to be a thing, and I can't think of a better all-in bonus to wrap up season two and give everybody that incentive to start pledging those dollars. And that, my friends, is DC United Genesis, the second season of this hypothetical game that I would love a bunch if it was real, because the thought of, you know, Batman teaming up with Spider-Man to fight Larflees, yes. All kinds of of yes. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Does this sound like the stupidest thing you've ever heard? Does it sound like the most fun thing you've ever heard? Could you really not 
care less. If so, you probably didn't even watch this far anyway. So I, you know, that it's a moot point to begin with, but I hope you enjoyed season two of my hypothetical DC United. Hope you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. Season three will be coming in just about a month's time as we continue here on Digital Charcuterie to make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. Thanks again for joining us, everybody. I'll see you all next time. And until then, may you be the masters of your own universe.